In this video, I'm going to show you how to create basically infinite animated gobos, then also how to bring in your own animated gobos, create your own animated gobos uh, if you want to make them in a third party app. But I'll show you how to do them inside of Cinema 4D and Redshift incredibly easy, and they make really cool stellar results that just kind of enhance your scene, especially for simple animations and stuff like this. Uh, you can see here my gobo is just nicely moving like a tree out of focus out a window so fantastic all right so uh, hey i'm derek kirk and today we are going to talk about how to create this i i've like started trying to do like the apparently like the first five seconds are like super important for like the seo of what the video is about i feel like i should just start off to just start saying like random things that are like trending you know i'll start the video off with like trump six seven and see you know how that goes and the AI, maybe I'll mention that too. I should just say all the buzzwords right now. But yeah, so that's why I'm like starting off with like the hook before I say, hey, what's up? But it's just an awkward transition. I haven't figured that out yet. So this scene is going to be available to download to patrons. It's kind of a semi-procedural adjustment thing. I'm going to include different lighting setups within it as well and have different variants of it. But it's kind of cool because you can toggle on some background elements. But besides that, uh, you can actually come in here and adjust like whether you want a triangle floor or if you want a circle floor or if you want a square floor or if you want like hexagon floor, you know, stuff like that. Like, so it just kind of gives you this really easy to translate and change. Um, basically, very easy setup and easy to change. And again, you know, so you can have like two different or three, you know, multiple different looks and scenes and they're all kind of adjust with the colors and stuff very easily. You can just change the entire vibe. Orange, blue, pink, whatever. You do you. All right. All right. So here's the cool part is it's very easy to create this nice animated gobo. And let me just show you like the easiest way to go about figuring this out and doing it. And that is to, you know, obviously create an area light. Let's just do a new scene real quick. So in a fresh scene with just a backdrop and a dome light, let's go ahead and create an area light. And first thing I like to do is do the target tag and null so I can move my area light around easier. We'll go ahead and pull that up so we can shine it on the ground there. You can see here. And what I like to do next is if you're gonna use gobos, you need to slide your spread down like a lot, like a lot, a lot, like get all the way down to zero. And then you can soften it up by clicking right here. Okay, so we'll soften it up like maybe 0.002 for now. But you can see how that's created a square. That's good. You also can use spotlights if you want. I just like the way area lights work because you can adjust the size of them and stuff easier in my mind. They act like windows. Okay, so then what you do is you grab a texture. Now, normally you can actually hit this little icon now. There's a new asset load thing and it'll pop up and you have like the option of HDRIs or, or textures, presets. You can actually use the AI search now, but you can type in Gobo and you can see there are gobos uh, available. So like we grab this one, double click it, and you can see how that has put that gobo in there. Now we need to turn bloom off. So you can see how, you know, we created that. And if we come in here to our light and we start increasing that spread up, it's gonna start blurring that out right now. Obviously it's cutting into it. So if you lift it up, it's gonna work like that. Okay, so that's how you add a normal gobo. Now, all we have to do now is scroll up in the object tab here and say add graph. And you're gonna see that creates a material for your area light. You can double click that. And here we have our texture, which is our gobo. So in here we can use um, any kind of image we want, black or white, it doesn't even have to be black and white, it can be colored. Um, and then there is also the option to add an animation here. So if you have a JPEG sequence of any kind of noise pattern or, or shadows or any Thing you want you can just use this as a projector i have a video where i use ae juice to create this cool like matrix code like laser scan effect just inside of here now the best part is is that we're not limited to textures we can actually just create whatever we want and the reason i like created that to bring it in here to show you this is not only to tell you that you have the option to do all that stuff but it's just nice to like know for sure that this texture file is plugging into this physical area light the general color section so whatever you want to replace it with now you know exactly where to plug it in okay so we're gonna go ahead and hit c and type in noise and we're gonna use max on noise there we go now i always like to use a ramp so we're gonna see and type in ramp just to control everything a little more visually and you can do a scalar ramp if numbers make more sense to you but we just go from output to alt input and that to replace that and now we have a max on noise replacing it now by default it's set to the input is set to the object which is kind of 
It's gonna be the area light, which doesn't really work very well. So all you have to do is change the input source to world. Boom, now you can see, we actually see our noise. So now we can either come in here to the noise, go to the output and adjust the high and low clips here and stuff, or just do that with this ramp by sliding it up to make it a little more dramatic, just like that. Okay, and so now anything we do with our noise, we can use as a gobo. Let's just go ahead and throw in like a, just like a torus in here or something, uh, just for an object to be available, something like that, right? So we just kind of have like a sense of how this is gonna look on an object or something. Um, just some random toruses in here, totally fine. So now what we can do is adjust it two ways. One, you can adjust the scale of the noise, but obviously you have control of the light and it's gonna be based on obviously the spread. You know, we spread it out more, it's gonna blur it and everything. And then you kind of lose the whole point of the gobo, though it does make the edges softer sometimes if you do that. Uh, but we'll do a couple clicks here and then you can adjust the scale of your lights, right? So the bigger the light, the bigger our gobo can be. And because we have a noise world space, it, it doesn't like stretch it, it just creates more of it, which is fantastic. If it's a texture, it's gonna stretch that texture out, which can be fine as well. But since it's a world space noise, we're actually able to just make this like huge. So yes, you could put this on a landscape and make it look like cloud coverage, uh, which is really cool. So we can do that and we'll open this up and you know, obviously we can still adjust the brightness and stuff of this and the color and everything. So if we wanna come in here and instead of being white, we could make this, you know, blue, have give it a bluish tint and that's just gonna make it blue. Now we probably should do more to make it more dramatic. Boom, there you go. So you can actually use color. If you don't wanna do black, you can do, you know, a red to blue ramp if you need to or whatever. I don't know why you would do that, but there you go. So now we can just adjust different noises and adjust the scale of the noise and everything. So if this is our shot here, let's just say, we want it to be a little chunkier, not so dramatic. Just increase the scale here, like 500, boom. Not bad, let's increase the octave so there's a little more detail. We're not gonna see it too much because we probably actually need to just change the noise. Now, here's the cool thing is noises are like infinite, right? You can change the seed, you can do whatever you want with these and it'll change the way it looks completely. Very cool. Uh, but also you can mess with the cycles which gets crazy and pretty cool pretty fast. Uh, but besides that, we can also just change the noise type. My favorite noise type is FBM. I don't know why, I just like that one. Uh, and then we'll make it bigger. We'll do like uh, 1500 Nice big noise just kind of looks like light leaking through the trees uh, But maybe we want a little more of that dark to come in a little less of that light So it's like like that right so it's just like light peeking through this these heavy trees, right? And uh, that looks pretty good. Maybe we should blur it a bit more in our light So we'll just kind of click this up until we kind of get the blur we want that's pretty good now all we have to do is animate it. So if you want this to animate, you simply go to your max on noise and scroll down a bit and you've got your animation right here. Now you can do like an animation of one, but that's probably gonna be too fast. It really depends on the noise, the size of the noise, the seed, and basically, yeah, the scale is gonna be one of the most important things here with the noise. But let's go ahead and play on this and you'll see, that's like, that's crazy fast. Like that's like a hurricane hitting that tree, which is fine, but not very relaxing use of a gobo. Maybe that's what you need. Maybe you need that for something. But uh, let's just fix that. So to fix that, we just go into our max of noise and change the speed to like 0.1. That'll slow it down. We're not gonna worry about it looping and stuff. You can if you want, but there you go. This nice, smooth max on noise. Now you can do something like beyond um, just this kind of rotation. Let's go ahead and add more frames in here. Let's do like 300, just so we can kind of have more time. But let's go ahead and offset it as well. So let's say you have like clouds moving and you want to do like a time lapse. You can just move them. So go to your max on noise, go to your input here, and this is where this is where. This is where this is why. Uh, we can just control or sorry, click the offset keyframe here, go to the last frame, and just slide it over in whatever direction you want. But know that you don't really need to go all the way over to one. Like one is as far as you need to go. Like you can go like point five over and then keyframe that and now you'll see we scrub through this our clouds are now moving to the left right very cool so obviously you know that was pretty cool so now you know we create that and then you can just come in here and change whatever type of noise you want get a completely different look 
just like that. Uh, so that's a very easy setup for that. And then, you know, let's just for the sake of example, I mean, also you can go beyond this. You can just use um, ramps and stuff to do color. You can use color gradients, you can use textures, you can use whatever you want and really start playing around with your lights. I mean, basically anything you do with a physical light where you put a gel in front of it or a cookie, if it's a Fresnel spotlight, you put the little cookie in front of it. That's exactly what a gobo is. Um, if you don't know what a cookie is, they're delicious and you should try one sometime. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's, yeah, let's delete this. Uh, let's grab the uh, landscape just so we can get an idea of you know, how this would look like. So like, let's say this is our landscape. You play. Oh, sorry, you scrub through it, you get this nice cloudy vibe. Again, if you're doing like a landscape, just come in here, scale this up. If you want bigger patches, lower the ramp down, you know, more white. Slide this up, make it more gradual, more shadows, less pockets of white. And get rid of the different octaves to make it smoother, softer, like that. You know, maybe that's what you want to do. Okay, so now you've got this kind of just moving cloud time lapse just on top of your stuff which looks pretty cool also the same thing where you animate noises it's really good to put on water and stuff to uh add like white foam that looks real but it's not yeah so there you go you know so now you can simply add you know nice gobos and things to your shot or scene whatever you want it's all customizable tailorable you see, that's pretty cool and all when it comes to like nice natural gobos, but what if you want it to be like harsh lines or whatever, you could totally use a texture or you could come in here and if you don't want to use like a noise, you could actually just use the tile and you can use those to create the cookies and we'll plug that in here. These just need to be set to white here. There we go. And then control, cold, click, hold, boom, 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 boom. There we go. And you know, now we can adjust that the overall scale 0.2. Boom. Now you can have like this grid cast across your thing like you've got this big window you can start combining things together with color ramps all kinds of stuff and you could do all this just within here so you know you can come in here and make some really cool kind of neat things and if you actually want it to be the opposite and you just want the you don't want the shadow of the spiral you want the opposite you just simply uh replace this with that so now you have these cool gobos like that where you have the the uh, basically the negative effect of that and so now you can have cool scales like that rings of light radio lines all these things and hexagons which is pretty cool and of course so like here's an example you know we've just we're just using lines and the best part about gobos in, in my opinion and my favorite thing about gobos is just how cool they look when you add in volume so lastly we'll go ahead and red, red shift volume to this and all we have to do is we make sure that that affects the gi we take this number down to 0.001 okay and then we make sure our dome light is not affecting it so in our dome light details we go down to volume turn that off so now all we have affecting it is our gobo so now with our environment light we can start turning this back up and you'll start to see it depends on the angle at which you're looking but these area lights will start to create this kind of vibe and you can chop them down all the way for the max effect but this is like a really huge one so let's scale it down let's do like 500 by 500 there we go pull it up nice okay so now what we can do is instead of here and the details here we can go down to our gi our volume here and really crank that up like 20. boom and now we have these cool rays coming in so you can just kind of amplify that a bit maybe 10 and create these nice rays and again all this can be like set up like a window coming through like that maybe we just set this like two so we have kind of this moody and it's going to be very like very sharp because we've got it set to be very sharp but again you can just increase the spread a little bit more to soften that up but there you go now we have this cool you know fog now one thing i would really say what i want to do and what i want to make i haven't made it yet though is like those a big fan just an animated like a black and white fan and just spin it so that it gives you that cool like you know blade runner like the beginning of blade runner where they're just like sitting there with that fan in the fog just creating that cool illusion or that optical what am i trying to say it's just cool looking 
But yeah, so now obviously you come in here, you go back to, you know, the noise originally that we had. And there we go. So obviously, you know, back to the original noise we had. It's cool, right? It's just nice. It looks good. It just adds a little extra layer to it. Now, for the, the fog and stuff, you obviously don't have to do that. Um, that's not a mandatory thing. I just always like it. But it does look how much better like this looks just like that versus, uh, you know, if we come into here and we just, you know, delete that. So it's just solid white. Obviously, it's too bright now. But yeah, so there's this. Which looks okay, but it looks kind of 3D. Whereas this just looks better, more natural, better looking. So, and then obviously now, you know, it animates, which is nice. You can't see it here. And that's the only downside. A lot of times you can't see the offside feedback. We can slide. But yeah, so now you have this nice kind of like, oh, it's, we're just sitting here while this window is sitting there through the day. And you could obviously change, animate the color as well. So you could go from like a nighttime to like evening golden orange to nighttime is blue to back to golden orange and back up to normal. You know, you could do, you pick a time lapse or whatever. Obviously, it, it doesn't really make sense like where in the scene where obviously one window wouldn't face both all the sun, all the things. Anyway, yeah, <clears throat> maybe it would. But yeah, you can see it's just like super nice, super easy, very cool, you know? Yeah, so I mean, that just looks better than the flat white. There you go. Nice, easy, natural gobo. Hopefully that helps. If you like that, um, leave a like and subscribe and thanks for more. And uh, you'll be able to get that project file on the Patreon.